the princess of the blue mountains the sun dipped over the hills dark clouds gathered in the sky lightning flashed followed by the rolling of thunder a fierce wind blew and it began to rain a lonesome traveler on a handsome white horse stopped at the crossroads who was he he was none other than the brave young prince advatar of ujjwalpur he had set out with his faithful horse on one of his long usual hunting trips but at last today he had lost his way in the heavy downpour neither he nor his companion the horse knew which of the four paths led to the palace suddenly he saw a bright light glowing far away in the darkness with a flicker of hope that he might find some help he rode towards it deeper and deeper he went into the dense forest the light led him to a large pool of water the raging storm had by now become milder and the young man beheld before him a wonderful sight above the crystal clear water a host of glow worms moved in a spiraling circle in fact the wee little creatures seemed to be in their gayest of moods they were dancing and forming beautiful patterns in the air they glowed in fine rhythm giving the impression of lilting music the prince looked on in amazement he just could not draw his eyes away from the reflection of the glow worms on the rippling water it's indeed a sight for the gods he exclaimed tired and weary he soon fell asleep meaning as the glow worms continued to glow and glow all night long at the crack of dawn when a mild light played on his face he woke up but remained still for from a bow above his head a strange conversation flowed down into his ears beyond the mountains blue said the mother parrot to her little one lives a beautiful princess fairer than the spring day but has she not found her prince charming asked her young one alas great kings and princes have all ventured into the enchanting kingdom but none has succeeded in fulfilling the conditions set to win her replied the bird in a sorrowful strain now the brave young prince could contain himself no longer standing up he asked parrot parrot would you please tell me where lies the realm of the blue mountains the home of the beautiful princess follow the way the wind blows and the singing streamlet as it flows the maiden lovelier than the loveliest flower awaits thee in the tall palace tower sweetly sang the parrot and the prince mounting his horse sped away with the wind he had traveled not for long when he reached a small clearing in the forest There on the branch of the great banyan tree crouched a ferocious panther all set to pounce on its prey. Below at the foot of the trunk sat an ascetic deep in a trance unaware of the impending danger. The panther leaped in prince advata in a flash shot an arrow that hit its mark. The beast fell dead in front of the hermit who slowly opened his eyes. The youth bowed to him in reverence. "Your brave and skillful and have indeed saved my body from being mauled by the beast" said the sage calmly. But haven't I saved you asked the prince rather puzzled at his statement Even if the panther had killed me only my physical body would have perished and not my true self Water cannot drown it nor can the fire burn it It is immortal replied the ascetic happy at the question Nevertheless he continued for your good and courageous deed you shall be fittingly rewarded The ascetic then went into the wee hut that stood nearby and returned with three magical gifts a carpet that carried whosoever sat on it wherever he wished to go a golden bowl that provided as much food and water one desired and lastly a lyre that played enchanting tunes take these three presents o young man they will be of great help to you in hours of crisis he said once again sat down and closed his eyes the white horse stood on the spread out carpet the prince sat on its back off to the mountain blue to the realm of princess true he muttered Higher and higher they rose into the sky and sailed towards the distant hills. At dusk they reached their destination. Softly the magic carpet landed on the outskirts of the small kingdom. Not very far beside a running brook stood a lonely cabin. Thrice he knocked and the wooden door opened with a loud creak. "Good evening, grandma, would you mind giving me shelter for the night?" he asked. "Do come in, young lad. Alas, there is not even a morsel of food nor a drop of milk." Weary that you are, what can I offer you except a cozy corner by the fire? said the poor old lady. Don't you worry, grandma, said the prince. Taking out the second gift of the ascetic from his bag, he said, "Golden bowl, give us food and drink." At once sumptuous meals on two silver dishes along with cups of honey drink appeared from nowhere. The good old woman had never tasted such delicacies ever in her life. 
The sun had already set and it was gradually getting dark. Observing that his host did not bother to light the lamps, he asked her the reason. No one in this region lights lamps when it gets dark, she replied. For at nightfall, Princess Himavati comes and sits on the topmost terrace of the palace tower. A pure white light emanates from her ethereal beauty. And everyone in the kingdom goes about doing their work as though it is the day. Soon there was a sudden dazzle and the whole region was bathed in tender silvery light. Enthralled, Prince Advata shaded his eyes and looked at the princess. Her beauty bewitched him. At midnight the princess descended to her chamber. The white glow gradually paled and then completely disappeared. It became dark and the kingdom went to sleep. Much before dawn, the carpet with its master landed in the sprawling palace garden. In the tender light of the rising sun, Advata saw in a tank nearby, a host of red lotuses swaying in the morning breeze. How beautiful are these flowers, thought he. How dare you trespass into the royal preserve, thundered a rude voice. It was the king's guard. He led Advata to the king. Who are you, young man? Your appearance speaks of noble birth. What brings you here? asked the king. I am Advata of Ujvalpur. Your majesty, I come to seek the hand of the princess, he replied with a graceful bow. Ha, ha, laughed the king caressing his big round belly. But are you prepared to fulfill the conditions, mind you, if you fail, like others you too will meet a fate worse than human life. Prepared, your majesty, replied Advata. Then bring us rain and let all our tanks be full to the brim. We are passing through a severe drought. I want this task completed by the morning, said the king. At nightfall when all was quiet, Advata, sitting on his flying carpet, rose to the sky and sailed around the sleeping realm. Taking out his bowl he said, golden bowl, rainwater. There was at once a heavy downpour, so heavy that the people thought that the ocean was falling from the sky. So you successfully passed your first test, remarked the king, quite perplexed. Your majesty, I await to know the nature of the second task, said Advata. The king pondered a while and then spoke. In the forest, there lives a dangerous demon. He has been a permanent menace to all of us. I want him to be captured, not dead but alive. Above all, he should be led into the kingdom a changed person, more gentle and humane. On the morrow, well before the break of dawn the prince briskly rode to the forest. On entering it he heard a thundering sound, so loud that the earth shook with its vibrations. That must be the giant snoring in his sleep, thought he and followed the rumbling noise. Soon he came to a great cave. Who is there? I smell sweet human flesh. Oh, 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 rolled out the demon's loud voice. Holding the third gift of the hermit, Advata said, play liar, play your enchanting tune. Immediately a piece of strange music emanated and the giant appeared at the mouth of the cave. He bowed to the prince, saying, at your service. Master. All were awestruck as Advata entered the royal city followed by the docile ogre which looked even more gentle than a lamb. My boy, you've indeed proved your mettle, said the king still bewildered at his miraculous achievements. But, he continued, you still have to pass a final test. Tomorrow, at daybreak be present in the royal garden. It was... The cock was yet to crow and the little birds had just begun to chirp softly. At the edge of the tank in the sprawling green lawn, stood Prince Advata once again charmed by the sight of the red lotuses. Suddenly he felt a gentle touch on his shoulder. Turning back he saw standing before him Princess Himavati. Oh brave prince, answer my question. For if you fail to do so, you too shall change into one of those lovely flowers, she said in a clear sweet voice. Oh radiant nymph, spell out the riddle and I shall solve it, said Advata in a confident tone. What is it that can never die, neither fire can burn it, nor can it be drowned by water, asked the princess. Advata thought a while and then remembered his meeting with the hermit. O oh princess of the blue mountains, all you desire to know is, nothing else but God in you and me, you can neither touch him nor can you see. Yet he sits deep in the hearts of all, and does guide us hearing our ardent call. The princess stood overwhelmed. You opened my eyes to a great truth, O oh my prince, she exclaimed. No sooner had she uttered those words than, lo and behold, the red lotus has changed into a host of handsome princes. For all those who had ventured to seek the hand of Princess Himavati and had failed to fulfill the conditions had been turned into these flowers. And it had been prophesied that the day the princess finds her prince, the charm would be over.
There was much rejoicing and the wedding was held amidst great festivities. Five long years had lapsed since Prince Edwata had left his homeland. The king and queen, taking him to be dead, passed their days in remorse. Night had set in and the people of Ujvalpur were preparing to go to sleep when all of a sudden the sky brightened up with a dazzling light. Everyone rushed out of their homes and beheld the marvelous sight. They saw a beautiful carpet gracefully descending from the firmament. On it stood hand in hand Prince Advatar and Princess Himavati. Indeed, so brightly did the happy princess shine that the moon felt shy and hid behind a cloud. Thanks for listening. Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel. See you with another story.